Hi, in this video, I'm looking at this problem where a stone is projected from a platform that's above a field and there is a wall placed in the path of the stone and we want to know how high above the field does the stone go, if the stone clears the wall and if it does, by how much um, and if not, where on the wall does it hit and if it did clear the wall, where from the platform does the stone end up landing. So to do this problem, this is obviously a projectile motion problem because we've got a projectile, our stone, being thrown or projected. And so the best way to start is to draw a diagram that sets up our reference as well as helps explain what's going on. So I'm going to have a y-axis for my vertical and an x-axis for my horizontal field, which is supposed to be horizontal. And then... I can start putting in the information we've got. So we've got a platform that is 12 meters above the ground. And from that platform, we're going to project our stone and then see where it lands. And that projection is done by projecting at an initial velocity of 25 meters per second and at an angle of 55 degrees. And then we have our wall placed somewhere down here and our stone may or may not be hitting it, we don't really know. And that wall is only three meters high. So, you know, that height there is three meters and it is placed at a location of X equals 60 meters because it's 60 meters away from the platform. So by doing this, we've got our initial location here up on our platform. We don't really care about how wide the platform is. We just set where it's launched from right on our Y axis. And that way we can put our wall further down. So now that we've got that, let's have a look at our equations of motion. So that way we can then answer the rest of these questions. So to start with for part A, I'm going to have to start looking at my equations of motion. And the first thing we're going to take a look at with that is, of course, our acceleration, which happens due to gravity being 9.8 meters per second per second. So our only acceleration in this problem is a negative 9.8 meters per second in the vertical direction and so that gives us our acceleration vector. From that, we can get a velocity vector by integrating our acceleration vector with respect to time. And so we're going to integrate this negative 9.8 J with respect to time, giving us a velocity of negative 9.8 T in the J direction, but plus some initial velocity, which I'm going to call u. Now our u was given to us up in our question and I've got it on my diagram. So u is a vector and if we split this into its horizontal and vertical components, we're going to have 25 cos 55 degrees i plus 25 sine 55 degrees j. And so that gives us our initial velocity. And so then we can go and get our final velocity vector by adding these two together. So my I component is literally just going to be this, which is 14.34 I. And then if we go and then put that in with our J component of velocity here and this J component, well, our J component from our initial worked out to be 20.48, and then we're going to minus off our 9.8 T to complete our J component. And so we now have our velocity vector. And then we can go and get our position vector after that, so we know where our stone is at any point in time, and we get our position vector by integrating our velocity vector. So our position vector is going to be the integral of 14.34i 
plus 20.48 minus 9.8 tj with respect to time. And so that is going to give us 14.34 time i plus 20.48 t minus 9.8 t squared on 2, which is going to be 4.9 t squared in the j direction. But we're going to have a constant for our initial position. And our initial position is defined by where we're launching from. And the coordinate of this point is 0, 12. So that gives us our initial position, our C vector, equals 0, I plus 12j because we're above the ground by 12 meters so we can then finish this off and we're just going to have 14.34 t in the i in the horizontal direction but in my vertical direction i've got to add in the 12 so i'm going to have 12 plus 20.48 t take 4.9 t squared j and that's in meters so now we have an expression for our acceleration, which is just gravity. We have an expression for our velocity, which is that expression there. And we have an expression for position, which is that expression there. And we can use these to start answering the questions. Because now that we've got equations of motion, we can go and answer the rest of the problem. So if we go back up to the top, I still haven't finished answering part A because all I've got is my equations of motion, but I've got everything I need to finish off because now I can look at this greatest height. So if I think about what's happening, the stone is launched and it slows down and slows down and slows down until it reaches this point and then it turns around and starts speeding back down towards the ground. So at the maximum height, we have no velocity. So I really only want to care about velocity, but I don't just want to care about velocity overall as my vector. I only want to care about my vertical velocity because my stone is always moving forwards, but it's only up and down that is changing. So my vel vertical velocity is going to equal zero. So I can just look at my vertical velocity, which is given to me by this expression here, and I can put that into my equation and equate it to zero and solve for t. So my vertical velocity, which I'm going to call vy, equals 20.48, take 9.8t, and I want to know when does that equal zero. And so that's going to occur when we have negative 20.48 divided by negative 9.8, which works out to be around 2.09 seconds. So I know when I'm at the maximum, so now I just need height, and height is given to us by y, and our y is given to us by our final position down here, 12 plus 20.48t take 4.9t squared. So we can have a look at our y. I've got that to be 12 plus 20.48t take 4.9t squared. I can substitute in that 2.09 that I've just worked out. And then we can just chuck that into a calculator and we get 33.397 meters. So the max height is approximately 33.40 meters if we want to round to two decimal places. So that is the final part for part A. We now know our maximum height. So now that we know that, we can start looking at the next part, which is given to us part B, does the stone clear the wall? So if I look at this, I don't know really if my path and the wall intersect. So what I need to do is look at what around this I can use. Well, I know where the wall is. So if I can find out when the stone is 60 meters away from the wall, from the platform, 
then I can find out by substituting into the height how high it is when it's at that 60 meters. And if it's bigger than the wall, it missed. If it's smaller than the wall, it hit. So let's go and do that then. So if we go and have a look at part B, I want to find out when does the stone have the horizontal position equaling 60 meters. So I want to know when does the x part of my position equal 60 meters. So if I get the x part of my position, which we've got down here, that's this 14 0.34t, I can sub in when x equals 60, and then solve for t. So if I solve for t by dividing by 14.34, I'm going to find out that the stone is 60 meters away from the platform it was launched from at 4.18 seconds. So then we can go and find out, well, what is the height? So we can use our height equation, y equals 12 plus 20.48, and we can substitute in our 14.18 as we go. It's only 4.18, not 14.18. So put that into a calculator, and we find out that the height when the stone is 60 meters away is 11.899 meters. So therefore the stone misses the wall because when it is 60 meters away it's practically 12 meters above the wall so it hasn't hit the wall yet it's far above it. So then that makes it nice and easy to go and answer part C which is if it clears the wall how, by how much, and we don't have to worry about the rest of it because it didn't. So to have a look at part C, we can just simply do the height that it passed over by, which was this 11.899 that we worked out. We might as well round that to 11.9, and we can minus off the height of the wall, which was three meters, and that tells us that we cleared the wall by 8.9 meters. So we're practically nine meters above the wall. And then lastly, we can have a look at part D because we did clear the wall. How far from the platform did it land? So we wanna know when does the stone hit the ground? So we want to know basically when is height equal to zero? So we can use our height formula again, which I've got written here. So we've used that a few times. So y equals 12 plus 20.48t minus 4.9t squared. We want to know when is our height zero. So we can solve this using a calculator or quadratic formula or whatever you want to try. And this gives us t equals negative 0.521 seconds, or t equals 4.700 seconds. Well, that gives us two answers. So this is a negative time. So this is before we launched the stone. So it's no good to us. So we want to use this one. So this is our valid solution. This one is not valid. So that means that we know when, we just need to know where. And it asks us for the distance from the platform. So we want horizontal distance. So we can get our horizontal distance equation, which was this 14.34t. So we can go that x equals 14.34t, substitute in our 4.7 seconds and we can find that uh, we get a distance of 67.40 meters. So that means we're going to write a conclusion to this. The stone lands 67.4 meters from the platform. And that's it. So
If we've got anything to do with projectile motion, then we need to use our vector skills and our calculus to go and get the equations of motion. And then we can use those equations of motion to then go and answer any questions about things like height, distance, etc. for this particular problem.